makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Me, you want to know more how I'm spending my time in America? Well, like every good American, all day long I'm playing my radio. Mamma mia, you should hear what goes on in those stories I'm here every morning. Tom is a leave of Mary. Bess is a leave of Jack. Junior is a runaway altogether. <laughs> then Uncle Frank, he's a robber bank at the Jones houses that go crazy. Everybody's screaming and shouting and fighting. <laughs> this is a called the family type of program. <laughs> You don't believe this, Mamma Mia, but the whole country is listening to these exciting stories every day in a week. But not on a Saturday and a Sunday because everybody is taking the weekend off to rest. <laughs> then in the night of time, they got to what's called private eyes stories. <laughs> Mamma Mia, the things that's happening there. First, the fella is set the fire to a building. Detective is a chase him, a car is a turnover, everybody gets a killed, all the fella gets a murdered. <laughs> then is a come of the organ music. <laughs> then the crook is a get the revenge on a girl. He's a shooter, put her body in the cement, drop him in the river, he's a get a chased by the cops. He's exploded the cops boat, everybody is a get the drowned. Then is a come of some more organ music. <laughs> Mamma mia, you would have loved this program. Such a beautiful organ of music. <laughs> Still, with these stories... Mamma mia, there's a siren. Must be fire or something. I'm better going to see. Hey, Astro, what's happened? An automobile accident. Somebody was hit on the corner. Oh, yeah, that's for the ambulance. All right, stand back, everybody. Let's have a little air. He's not hurt. Just a little shock. That's the fourth accident in this corner this year, and still the city want to put up a traffic light. Yeah, but why, Mr. Pellegrino? Why they don't put up a traffic light? Why? Why? Go fight the city hall. Yeah, they got money for everything. But I ask them to put up two little bulbs on the corner, a green one and a red one. They got to hold a general election to find out if they got enough dough in the treasury. <laughs> yeah, maybe they should have a marshal a plan for traffic lights. Yeah, but Mr. Pellegrino Astro, maybe is it possible they don't know about it? It's a busy corner on a whole state in a maple. Maybe if somebody was it to tell don't them... Don't make me laugh. Alderman Johnson promises a traffic light before every election. Then he gets elected and you know them campaign promises. Sure, it's like a girl who promises her fellow the moon. And then they get married and he sees the stars. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh... But maybe if it was enough for people to ask for a traffic Not light. Not a chance. They figure we're living in a democracy? Everybody's got the same right to get bumped off. <laughs> yeah, but wait, wait, I know. Tonight in my night school class, I'm going to ask my teacher, Miss Spalding, all about this. Ah, uh, go ahead, Luigi. It don't hurt to try. Uh. Sure. Maybe she's going to have some ideas of how we can going to get to this traffic light. Sure, sure. But in the meantime, take my advice, Luigi. Don't you try to cross a whole state of Maple Street without a Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, please, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Harwood? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? I ain't got a present, but if I knew you was coming, I'd have baked the cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank 
you fellow poopers. That was a lot of balloons. <laughs> all right, all right. Now let's get on with our lesson. Today we are taking up some irregular verbs, and we'll start with the verb to be. Mr. Horowitz, will you conjugate the verb? With pleasure. What's the question? <laughs> Oh, now, please pay attention. Conjugate the verb to be. Oh, yes. To be, I be, you be, she be. Oh, no, no. Is that how you speak English? I be in the movies, you be in the movies, she be in the movies? Sure, if it's a B picture. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, class, I would like a correct answer on that question. Yeah, well, if you would like to make certain, why don't you just call on me, Miss Spaulding? Oh, I hate the show off. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Olson. You may conjugate the verb to be. Yo. A, M, U, or he, is, she, is, we, or you, or they, are. Olson, the suspense is killing me. What are we? <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz, I've heard enough. Now you conjugate to be. Me? Yes. All right. He, be, and she, be got married and they had a little baby. <laughs> Well, I can see I'll never get the correct answer from you. Mr. Basco, you may conjugate the verb to go. That's easy. The car want to go. Mr. Basco, conjugate it. You think that's going to start the car? Oh, no, no. Mr. Basco, don't you know what's wrong? Sure, there's a lots of cars are going, but there's no traffic light. What? It's the corner of the Holster and the Maple Street. It should have a traffic light, so maybe it wouldn't be so many accidents like it was happening again today. Again? Oh, no. Oh, what's our civilization coming to? It used to be, give a man a horse he can ride. Now it's give a man a car so he can have an accident with it. <laughs> oh, come now, Mr. Schultz. The automobile was a great invention. Yeah, some invention. Twenty million drivers running around the streets aiming at each other. <laughs> the whole country is like a giant shooting gallery. Miss Budding... It was a friend of Astro was who told me today that it's not possible to get a traffic light on the corner of a holster and a maple. You think so? Well, in our country, Mr. Basco, nothing is impossible. You could write your alderman, wire your congressman, appeal to some civic group, or write to some newspaper. Better still, go home, lock the door, hide under the bed, and pray a car won't find you. <laughs> What's the use, Luigi? It ain't so easy to get public improvement so far. But, uh, Schultz, uh, my mind is made up. How am I going to write a letter to the newspaper? Oh, that was a good idea, Luigi. Sure, you got nothing to lose. I'm uh, not going to get in trouble if I'm going to do this, huh? Mm. Of course not. That's the duty of a good citizen. Why, certainly, there's no trouble. Now, you sit down, write a letter, and we'll see if we can't help you right now. Oh, thank you, Miss Spaulding. I'm all right. Dear newspaper friends... I'm a thing. Hey, Luigi, that's some letter you got in the paper. Oh, hello, Astro. Uh, you saw the word of my name on the bottom? Yeah. Hey, you're a celebrity. The whole neighborhood is talking about it. We even got a few petitions going around. Petition? What's that? Well, you, you you take a piece of paper, write what you want on it, and everybody signs their name on it. Oh, it's like the Declaration of Independence. That's so good. <laughs> hey, Louis, see, you got your name on a paper right on a dicker Tracy. You're a bigger shot, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Pellegrino. Uh, it's about a time somewhere there's a complaint about that corner. Hey, Luigi, do me a favor and write me a letter on your paper tomorrow, huh? Sure, what do you want, to, Mr. Pellegrino? Well, I'm a got to walk three blocks to the street of car. See if you can make the streetcar stop by my house, huh? <laughs> Luigi, me boy. Oh, hello, Officer Flanagan. Hey, did you see Luigi was to write a letter in the paper? Sure, huh? and I did, and it was a fine letter indeed. Hey, Flanagan, how come you don't stand in the middle of the street and direct the traffic? Because I've got to cover me beat. You know what would happen if I directed traffic, don't you? Yeah, the beat would be covering you. Mamma mia, they make me feel so important. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Oh, hello, Pasquale. Well, well, well. Look who's writing the letters to the newspaper. My own little banana nose. <laughs> oh, stop, Pasquale. Uh, look, honey, you. 
Only a year and a half in the country. Already you're telling the government where they should put their traffic lights. Yeah, but I was... Maybe you should tell them what color lights you would like in the traffic signals. Maybe instead of red, you want it should be a lavender. Or maybe you should have write your next letter to the president and say, Dear Mr. President, how's about we should have moved Europe to America so people could go abroad without leaving the country? <laughs> no, but Pasquale, I'm an honest standard. You're not angry because I wrote the letter to the paper, huh? Oh, I'm not angry. Luigi, I've been here 27 years. I'm a full citizen. And I never yet wrote a letter to a newspaper. And you know why? Because you can't write English. <laughs> That ain't the only reason. It's because I got more sense than to tell the government how they should run their business. Truman don't tell me where to sell my spaghetti. I don't tell him where to play his piano. <laughs> now, for you taking my advice... Hello? Luigi Pasco here? Yeah, that's me. What am I can do for you? I'm Hal Brown from the neighborhood political club. The boss sent me down to have a talk with you. Oh, you poor fella. You lonely, you got nobody to talk with, huh? <laughs> Mr. Basco, that was a nice letter you sent into the paper yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't send any more. Huh? Basco, you want me to lay my cards on the table? But I'm a no play poker. <laughs> huh? Look, Basco, I'm not here to kid around. Luigi, you let me handle this. You shut up! Luigi, you better handle it. <laughs> I'll give it to you straight, Basco. The boss promised the voters that traffic light in his last campaign and a campaign before that and a campaign before that. Then why he's never kept his promise and gave him a traffic light? Well, you see, it has to come before a referendum. That is, the legislative acts according to the constituted bodies. It proceeds by process of gerrymandering. <laughs> Maybe I'm a stupid, but I'm a don't understand it. <laughs> Luigi, this is a politics, and nobody understands it. <laughs> Look, Basco, I understand the neighborhood is sending around petitions, and you're going to send them to the mayor. Be a smart boy and call the whole thing off. Yeah, but a traffic light is going to be a good thing. You'll get it. Don't worry. Only let the boss handle it his own way. And the when? What's the difference when? The boss will decide when. And the boss... He's the side that when another little boy is going to get hit by a car? Tell him, mister. Is it the boss who got any little boys and girls of his own? Hey, Pasco, you a radical? What's that? Look, Pasco, you got a nice little antique shop here, but don't be surprised if some inspector or cop walks in one of these days and finds out reasons why the joint should be closed. Ma Closed? Yeah, little things like fire violations, zoning infractions, health infringements. Good night, Mr. Basco. Luigi. What the Pasquale? Sooner the swallows, are they going to fly back to Capistrano? I think you're going to be with them. <laughs> you think I'm a did it wrong, Pasquale? That's a summer question. You think I'm a did it wrong? You only made enemies with the alderman, that's all. He's going to pass the word up to the mayor about certain a complaining immigrant. The mayor whispers to the governor. The governor tips off for the president. Then the president calls up at the radio repairman in your neighborhood and he jams up your radio. Yeah, but why, Pasquale, why? I tell you why. So whenever Walter Winchell tells the American people some important national secret, you're going to be left out. <laughs> Mamma mia! Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that millions of people find helpful and enjoyable during a busy day. Keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy in your purse or pocket. Every time you feel the need for a refreshing little pickup, chew a stick. Chewing on a good piece of gum really does something for you. It sort of relieves that feeling of strain and tension, gives you a bit of comfort and satisfaction that helps you feel better and work better. Then, too, the lively, real mint flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum leaves a clean, fresh taste in your mouth. Try it, won't you? 
Get a few packages of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum tonight or tomorrow morning. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, just because I'm trying to get a traffic signal for my corner, it looks like I'm in the worst trouble of my life. And maybe you think I'm wrong. That street corner is not so bad. Believe me, Mamma Mia, three times I'm tried to cross it before, and three times the same taxi has chased me back. <laughs> You should have seen me. I'm a jump around more than Uncle Pietro's a goat today. He's a sitting and typing the time. <laughs> but I'm a convinced I'm a do the right thing for the neighborhood. And then suddenly the door is open up and I'm a here. Hello, little cabbage puss. Oh, hello, Pasquale. What are you doing? Still trying to fight the whole world, eh? Pasquale, my mind is made up and nothing is going to frighten me. No. Hey, Luigi, read this. Special delivery letters are just a committee for you. Read where it's come from. Police department. Hey, Pasquale, what do they want from me? Open up, or maybe they offer you bargain rates in a cell at Alcatraz. <laughs> hey, dear Mr. Basco. Oh, Pasquale, I'm, I'm, I'm so nervous. I can see. The way your hands are shaking with those words are liable to fall off the page. Here, give me. I'm going to read you death certificate for you. All right, I hear it. April 4th, 1950, police debt. <laughs> debt, what's that? Debt, that's something you owe somebody. <laughs> sure, already the police is suing you for the traffic signal. Huh? Give me the letter, Pasquale. I'm going to read Dear Mr. Basco, one of our officers will see you 7.30 p.m. with the reference to traffic signal situation at a holster in a maple. Ah. Make sure you are home when officer arrives. Well, let me see. Who signed this letter? Captain Tom Redden, 41st PCT. PCT. Psst. <laughs> PCT, that's a bad. Yeah, but Pasquale, what's this a PCT stand for? Police are caught for troublemakers. <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, all I did was write a letter to paper about a traffic light. In this country is a freedom of speech. Sure, they got a freedom of press too, but still you got to pay for your newspapers. <laughs> Luigi, your trouble is you read the words the way they ain't. Now what's to happen? Your ignorance has brought you to a catastrophe. <laughs> well, Pasquale, I'm going to stop him. I'm going to write them out to the police department. This is not going to help. It's gotten too big now, Luigi. You've got to go over the heads of the police department. The FBI. The FBI, huh? Well, sure, I'm going to downtown right now to see J. Edgar Hoover. Hey, wait, wait, Luigi. Come back. Stupid little pup squeak. J. Edgar Hoover. He don't even know Hoover's a first name as a Herbert. <laughs> hey, it's a big building. Sign out the side that says uh, City Hall. Mamma Mia, it's the biggest hall I've ever saw. Well, I'm a better going inside. Ah, there's a man in a gray uniform. Maybe he's a telling me. Uh, pardon me, mister. Yes? Where am I going to go see the FBI about a traffic light before the police are coming to close up on my store at 7 or 30 p.m.? <laughs> what is this, a gag? No, it's uh, my necktie. I'm always wearing it tight. <laughs> Just who do you want to see, mister? Well, it's, uh, it's about traffic signal. Better go see, see Mr. Albert Schlicker. In the traffic engineering department. Go right down the hall to room nine. Thank you. Albert Schlicker, traffic engineering department. Ah, that's a him. I'm a knocker. Tell him. 
Hello. Yes? Did you have an appointment for five o'clock? Oh, no. I'm got a plenty of time to talk with you. Hmm? Well, who are you? Well, I'm Luigi Basco, 21 and North Hall of Street to Chicago, Fort Illinois. I'm a coming to see you about the letter I'm a got from the police department about traffic signal. You see, it's a busy corner. Oh, at... now I see. Well, Mr. Basco, we get hundreds of requests every day for traffic signal devices, but people often forget. We can't always work miracles. Very often, our hands are tied. Poor man, it must have hurt to your wrists. <laughs> What? Oh, no, please, Mr. Schlicker. I'm going to try to start a trouble. Little kids was being hit by cars or so. Mr. Basco, perhaps I can save your time and mine by explaining how our department operates. Naturally, we uh, we do have a, a little red tape. <laughs> red tape. Yes. Uh, you uh, know what uh, red tape is, of course? Oh, sure. That's a little band aid with the macruta crumb. <laughs> uh, not quite. You see, Mr. Basco... The traffic engineering department acts on request immediately by sending out a crew to count the volume of traffic at the intersection in question. Uh-huh. If there's a count of 750 vehicles per hour at the intersection, including 175 per hour from the minor streets, and if that average is maintained for an eight-hour-per-day period, then the volume of traffic would be judged sufficient to warrant the erection of a traffic signal. Is that clear? Huh? <laughs> However, the actual installation would also be dependent upon timing considerations insofar as proper space distances have to be maintained between signals in order to maintain continuous flow of traffic without severe delay. Do you follow me? No. I'm a think is it too much traffic. Now, maybe I'd better put it another way. I'm a got a feeling it wouldn't have helped. I was thinking of the accident factor. No, please, don't get excited. Listen, Mr. Basco. If the accident history is so severe as to require the installation of traffic signals, we would cut the red tape. And grab the bull by the horn. Yeah, that's your trouble. You spending too much time of putting up a traffic signal for the bulls. <laughs> this is impossible. No, it's not impossible. Let the stockyards take care of the bulls. <laughs> Don't buy red tape and you got more money for the people. Now, look here, Mr. Bosco. I'm a busy man. Yeah, but I'm... Good a... day, Mr. Bosco. <laughs> Made out with the FBI, little cabbage puss. Was there no FBI, Pasquale? Was traffic engineering department? Man is a start to explain to me, but I'm acting stupid and he's a throw me out. Now I'm gonna get even a worse of trouble. Sure, sure. Luigi, trouble with you, you got a traffic signal of brain. It stops when it should go. <laughs> Now, stop talking so stupid and begin packing your clothes. Any minutes, the police department is coming to throw you out of the country. Mamma mia, it's almost a half past seven. Pasquale, help me. Talk to them. Maybe you... Take it easy, Luigi. Calm down. Relapse. <laughs> you know, when you come to Pasquale, I always help you out. After all, I'm a voting of 25 years in this country. I'm a respected citizen. I could have talked to the politics of boss and take you under my parole. I'd clear up everything for you. Oh, Pasquale, you would do all of this for me? <laughs> sure, little pumpkin head. Now, uh, I'm going to do you a favor. Maybe you're going to do me a little favor. <laughs> oh, sure, Pasquale. What the favor you? Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> now I'm going to call her the blush and the bride. Rosa! 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 You called me Papa! <laughs> yes, my little wallflower. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> I love Luigi! <laughs> hello, Rosa. Rosa, Luigi's decided to forget all about it, trying to improve the city. Instead, he's thinking about a marriage. Ooh! Oh! <laughs> now, uh, to start things off right, I'm sending you two to the movies. You're going to see Love Happy and sit in the balcony with the Marx Brothers. Now, Rosa, you and Luigi are going to be up in that balcony for three hours. What do you say? We better take along a lot of popcorn. 
Gordon. Oh, shut up, you face. <laughs> now, listen, I'm trying... Hello, is Mr. Basco in? Oh, he's a policeman. Hey, Pasquale, please, please, you tell him. Sure, sure, I tell him. Mr. Officer, you don't got to take this man away. I'm a personally <laughs> going to... Mr. Basco, uh, Captain Redden of our precinct thought you should get the news first because it seems you did all the work. The city is putting up that traffic signal tomorrow night. <laughs> Mamma mia, that's so wonderful, wonderful. You hear that, Pasquale? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> now, officer, if you'll please excuse us, me and Luigi, we got other plans to talk about. Other plans? Uh, yes, uh, Luigi, about the wedding. Now, what kind of a wedding would you like? Oh, the wedding. Well, Pasquale, make it a traffic signal on the wedding. Traffic signal the wedding? What's that? I'm a stop for you and a Rosa go. Wait to my son. <laughs> Goodbye, Pop. So, Mamma Mia, right now is a big, beautiful traffic light on the corner of a Hollister and a Maple. And it's making me feel real good inside when I see the little bambini walking up in the back without being afraid of the cars. Last night, politic boss Johnson was come around and started taking all of the credit. He was a walk across the street telling everybody how big he was. And I guess what's happened? Officer Flanagan was proud to present the politician with a first ticket for jaywalking. <laughs> You're loving a son of Luigi Vasco, the little immigrant. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you that you'll also enjoy chewing delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. There's lots of refreshing real mint flavor in a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint that cools your mouth, freshens your taste, and sweetens your breath. Besides, as you know, daily chewing helps keep your teeth clean, bright, and looking their best. So for a taste treat that's good and also good for you, Get healthful, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is produced and directed by Cy Howard and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman. Jay Carroll Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, and Sarah Berner as Mrs. Pellegrino. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Friends, the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of the same CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.